Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of RT Vlogs. For today, we will talk about engineering lettering and drafting basic. So today, pag-aaral natin kung paano ma-improve yung penmanship ninyo or yung lettering ninyo sa inyong plates. We will also talk about yung mga basic na drafting methods or and how you do your isometry and how you do your lines or how you do your measured drawings. So yun, pag-aaral natin lahat. Orthographic projections and perspective drawing. Parallel projection. Paraline drawings include a subset of orthographic projection known as axonometric projections, the isometric, dimetric, and trimetric, as well as the entire class of oblique projection. Each type offers a slightly different viewpoint and emphasizes different aspects of the subject. As a family, however, they combine the measured precision and scalability of orthographic multi-view drawings and the pictorial nature of linear perspective. So in this slide, you can see the multi-view drawings, the oblique, axonometric, and the isometric. So the projection system, orthographic projections. In orthographic projections, we have principal face of rectangular form in each view is parallel to the picture plane. So we have in here the plan, the section, and the elevation. In your axonometric projection, you have your isometric. Three major axes make equal angles with the picture plane. Dimetric. Two of the three major axes make equal angles with the picture plane. And in trimetric, three major axes make different angles with the picture plane. We also have your oblique projection, which is the elevation oblique, which is the principal vertical phase of rectangular form is parallel with the picture plane. Plan oblique, principal horizontal phase of rectangular form is parallel with the picture plane. So these are all your paraline drawings. So we have in here the examples of isometric, dimetric, trimetric, plan oblique, and elevation oblique. So we move on to perspective projection. In perspective projection, it is divided into different types of perspective. We have the one-point perspective, which is one horizontal axis is perpendicular to the picture plane. The other horizontal axis and the vertical axis are parallel with the picture plane. Two-point perspective. Both horizontal axes are oblique to the picture plane. Vertical axis remains parallel with the picture plane. In three-point perspective, three major axes of rectangular form are oblique to the picture plane. So what is the origin of perspective drawing? The first known picture to make use of linear perspective was created by the Florentine architect Filippo Brunelleschi. Sacho, the first great painter of the early Renaissance period was the first artist who demonstrated full command of the new rules of perspective. If you can see in the, the illustration in the slide, the smaller image is art before perspective and the bigger image is art after the discovery of perspective. Perspective is used not only to make the object appear to have dimensions, but also to cause it appear close up or in distance or to suggest a feeling of space. The key concepts of perspective is the horizon line, the vanishing point, the picture plane, and station point. What are those? The horizon line. The horizon or the eye level is the axis around which a perspective drawing is constructed. In perspective drawing, the horizon also happens to be the viewer's eye level. When we are outdoors, we use the horizon as a point of reference to judge the scale and distance of objects in relation to us. In art, we tend to use the term eye level rather than horizon, as in many pictures, the horizon is hidden by walls, buildings, trees, hills, etc. So to interpret it better, this is your horizon line. This is how you point your horizon line in the normal view. And the variation of the horizon line if it's a high horizon and a low horizon line. Next is your vanishing point. A vanishing point or point of convergence is a key element in many works of art. In a linear perspective drawing, the vanishing point is the spot and the horizon line to which the receding parallel lines diminish. 
It is what allows us to create drawings, paintings, and photographs that have a three-dimensional look. Parallel lines as we see them. Why do we see parallel lines like this one? So this is the location of the vanishing point. Also, the placing of the vanishing point is crucial to avoid warp perspective. We also have the positioning and spacing of the vanishing point. Now we move on to the picture plane. The picture plane is a flat two-dimensional surface on which we draw or project an image in perspective. The ground plane is at 90 degrees to the picture plane. To explain it further, here is a picture of a man holding a sheet of cellophane or glass upright before his eye. The location and height of the eye in which it is a point in space that has no direction is known as the station point. So this is your station point. Cone of vision. Cone of vision have an approximate 60 degree angle of undistorted vision that extends as an imaginary cone from their eyes forward. In linear perspective, the cone of vision is indicated with a 60 degree angle beginning at the station point. It is 30 degrees to the left and right of the line of sight. In linear perspective, the proportion of objects drawn outside of the cone of vision becomes distorted. So here is an example of, of how the cone of vision works. Cone of vision degrees for different perspective. When drawing, it's best to maximize the space on the page and not draw objects that are too distorted. Here are guidelines for the cone of vision degrees for different perspective construction. Other than one point perspective, very common BP combination are 75, 15, 60, 30, and 45, 45. In this slide, it presents the different location of the station point. Standing higher or low with the line of sight parallel to the ground. In the cone of vision, the line of sight is parallel to the ground at different heights. On the object are three height lines. Each of the lines corresponds with the height of the viewer's eye. So we have another example of the perspective in here. You have your bird's eye view or the perspective looking down and your worm's eye view or the perspective looking up. You also need to apply what you learn in the sh shading techniques in which you put shadow, shades and shadow in the perspective that you created. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to do a two-point perspective of a simple form. To achieve accurate measurement in two-point perspective, start by placing a correctly proportioned top view of your subject at the top of the page at an angle. Next is to find the picture plane vanishing points by drawing diagonal lines from the station point parallel to the side walls of the top view. Make two marks where these lines touch the picture plane line. These are the picture plane vanishing point. We now choose a horizon line. The higher the horizon line, the more elevated our view will be. The lower the horizon line, the lower our view. Bring the picture plane vanishing points straight down to the horizon line and make marks. These marks are the horizon line vanishing point. Draw a ground line from the bottom of the side view to the middle of the page. The ground line is parallel to the horizon line. Now draw a fine from the lower corner of the top view to the station point. This will form the near corner of our shed drawn in perspective. Find the height of the shed's wall by drawing a line from the top of the side view wall parallel to the ground line, to this corner line. Draw a ground line from the bottom of the side view to the middle of the page. The ground line is parallel to the horizon line. Now draw a fine from the lower corner of the top view to the station point. This will form the near corner of our shed drawn in perspective. Find the height of the shed's wall by drawing a line from the top of the side view wall parallel to the ground line to this corner. From these new marks, draw lines perpendicular to the picture plane. This line places the side corners of the shed in perspective. Draw lines from the top and bottom of the sheds near corner to the horizon line vanishing points to establish the left and right walls of the structure. To establish the height of the peak roof in perspective, draw a fine parallel to the ground line from the top of the side view roof to the shed's corner line and make a mark. From this mark, draw a line to the left vanishing point on the horizon line. This is the perspective roof line. Now draw a line from the station point to the front peak of the roof in the top view. Make a mark where this line crosses the picture plane. 
From this new mark, draw a line straight down to the perspective roof line where this line meet is the peak of the roof. Draw the pitch roof lines to the point you have just established. To find the back peak of the roof, draw a line from the station point to the back peak of the roof in the top view. Make a mark where this line crosses the picture plane. Draw a line from the front peak of the roof to the right horizon line vanishing point. This will be the roof ridge. Then draw a vertical line down to the roof ridge. This establish the back peak of the roof and the length of the ridge. Now you created a simple shed drawing. Now we move on to your applied geometry. In here, we will also be learning about straight lines, parallel lines, intersecting the right angle, acute angle, obtuse, complementary, supplementary angles, the equilateral triangle, the isosceles, a 3 for 5 right triangle, and the scaling triangle. We also have different shapes in here and compositions. We have your concentric circles, eccentric circles, square rectangle, rhombus, rhomboid, trapezoid, trapezium, your pentagon inscribed, your hexagon circumscribed, heptagon, octagon, your nonagon, the decagon, and dodecagon. This, we also have in here some forms, the cube, right rectangle, right triangular prism, right triangular pyramid, right cylinder, right cone, first of a cone, and the sphere. This is samples of how you do or how you draw your line. Some instructions on how you draw your arches and regular polygon. In here, we also talk about polygon, which is a plane figure bounded by five or more straight lines, not necessarily of equal length. A regular polygon is a plane figure bounded by five or more straight lines of equal length and containing angles of equal size. Ellipse. The ellipse is the plane curve generated by a point moving so that the sum of the distances from any point on a curve to two fixed points called foci is a constant. The helix is a curve generated by a point that revolves uniformly around and up or down the surface of a cylinder. The lead is the vertical distance that the point rises or drops in one complete revolution. Your parabola is a plane curve generated by a point that moves along a path equidistant from a fixed line, the retrix, and fixed point over the focus. Again, these methods produce an approximation of the true conic section. So, in drawing your parabola, you have your parallelogram method and the offset method. Your hyperbola is an open curve with two branches, the intersection of a plane with both halves of a double cone. The plane does not have to be parallel to the axis of the cone. The hyperbola will be symmetrical in any case, so this hyperbola is your non-Euclidean geometric form. So we have in here the summary of your conic sections, which is in your plates. You have the ellipse, your parabola, and the hyperbola. Some applications of your conic sections in real life is the shape of your favorite snack, the Pringles, the saddle shape Pringles, and application of the hyperbolic paraboloid structures by Felix Handel. Now it's time to use our drawing table and drawing instruments. 